Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the European or the wrap of the European uh, qualifiers. We have now all European teams at the World Cup confirmed and these guys, Wales, make it for the first time since 1958. Yeah, probably should have done it uh, a little bit sooner, but I, I said I'm gonna do two World Cup updates. The first one will focus on the European side of things. And then the second uh, video will come in roughly a week from now, where we then talk about uh, uh, how the intercontinental playoffs um, will proceed. Uh, and who qualified from there. Um, for me, the European playoffs, it was kind of this weird bag. I mean, in both cases, the, if it was normal times, in both cases, I would be more than happy if uh, in either of the playoffs the home teams had won, especially Wales. I think Wales would be the Cinderella story because, I mean, 1958, it was Pelé who scored his first World Cup goal uh, against Wales, by the way. So just to put it bit out there, how ancient that is, 64 years it is since uh, Wales was at the World Cup, and it should be the Cinderella story. However, everyone, and understandably so, if you're not Welsh or, 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 or don't have any connection to the country, I think you would probably be pulling for Ukraine because of the story that they are the suppressed country that has been invaded by Russia and so on. And that made for such weird games. Same thing in Scotland. Honestly. I did not have a horse in that fight because my horse, Austria, has been gone and, oh boy, I, they actually paid off that, that they are gone because now we actually seemingly have a coach that can get stuff out of this team. But, you know, we lost another year or, or so. So, I mean, this was the path where Austria was in. But whether it's Scotland, Ukraine or Wales, uh, from my point, but I would be happy for either, either team. I think I would have been very happy with Scotland qualifying because they are a team that I feel should be there. I am quite happy that Wales did qualify because, I mean, 64 years. But equally, I would have been happy for Ukraine qualifying for the very simple reason that this would have uh, given some respite, especially with the World Cup played in winter, to kind of for uh, the Ukrainian people to look forward to. So uh, it it was really, 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 really weird. And um, the Ukrainian team did everything uh, to kind of show their pride in their country in the war. I mean, uh, watching the national anthems ahead of the Scotland game, this was for me must watch te 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 television. How the, how, the, how the Ukrainian players wrapped in their flags are standing there. Um, the whole crowd not whistling, uh, which should not be happening and, uh, anyway, but there was a, give, a certain reverence giving to Ukraine, given to Ukraine. So yeah, I, I really thought this was uh, great. However, <laughs> I need to talk about the Finalissima a little bit uh, before that. It's a game that I completely forgot. Uh, in in a way, it's an unofficial World Cup final where we have the, you know, it's as much World Cup as the Intercontinental Cup used to be uh, way back when. When the winner of the, Euro, of the Euros plays, of course, the winner of the Copa America to decide who is the best team from Europe and South America, and by extension, since only those two continents have produced winners for the World Cup, are the winners in uh, uh, our kind of the unofficial World Cup winners. Uh, it's even more uh, <laughs> weird than um, the Confederations Cup was. I mean, there was a contest. It never was a contest because, yeah, uh, I mean, Mancini said, okay, this is the last time that the Old Guard, I mean, it was played at Wembley. Old Guard will play. Chiellini got his final game. They played against Argentina, of course, and Argentina just wiped the floor with Italy. The 3 0 uh, scoreline was rather flattering to Italy. Now, um, I don't know how serious the Italians were taking it. Argentina definitely took it very serious. Um, or if it's really that Arch R or Arch Argentina just is a really, really good team. I would say that an Italy that is probably more set up, and you know, the season Italy also just ended, could give uh, Argentina a bit more run for the money. But I, I also have to say, I think this Argentina team is one that's a little bit overlooked in many, many ways. So yeah, the finalissima, Messi suddenly wins trophies. Was it the last one that he wins for the national team or is there another one coming in December? Well, we shall see. So let's go back to the European qualifiers because, I mean, uh, that was definitely more important in many ways. Um, Scotland, you, Ukraine, I already talked about uh, the national anthems and, and, and so on. It took about five minutes to really realize that Scotland were, were just 
over the heads in this. Uh, Ukraine, um, and I actually think the scheduling of, the, of, of, of its game, just the 1st of June, just a, a week or so after the Premier League season ended, might have played in Ukraine's favor. Yes, um, Yamolenko and um, Sienchenko also had had to play in the Premier League. But most players uh, that were, you know, from Dynamo Kiev, they didn't play a game, they had actually time to prepare in, in a way. Now, uh, you could say they're rusty or whatever, but I definitely had a feeling that Scotland was not really there and not up for the task. And so in the end, uh, Ukraine actually had it quite easy. They had already a few chances. And just when you thought that Scotland might mount some, something, Yarmolenko makes it 1-0 after a nice Malinowski assist. And right after the the, the, the break, another uh, really good attack uh, through Yaremchuk Yar against 2-0. To be honest, at that point, the 2-0 was a flattering score. Uh, Ukraine, in the, in the following 10-15 minutes, could have added on to the score. They were way the better team. However, it also has to be said that uh, Scotland missed some really, really bad chances. Like uh, McGinn from very short range uh, just doesn't bring it on onto the net. I mean, there you could have actually gotten the game uh, right back. No, they didn't. Uh, Conor McGregor then had, uh, I think it was a header, uh, that is like cleared behind the goal and puts one back. And at that point you think, ah, maybe Scotland can make a miracle and get the game going again. Um, and they tried. I give them the effort. Uh, however, Ukraine on the counter like, always was going uh, somewhere and in the end of big in the 95th seals the deal for Ukraine to set up a play final in Wales. Uh, a Welsh team that fortunately there was the Nations League so they could play against Poland. But, you know, <laughs> at the same time, I'm sorry. It was all about this one game for them. They also moved it not in the Millennium Stadium, but in the Cardiff City Stadium to have a little bit more of a, um, a crowd advantage. Um, you know, give a give of money, but it's it's a much tighter stadium. I think this is a smart, smart move because whenever they play in, at, at, at that stadium, they actually do quite well. Um, the game was in a way... Wales was more up for the task than uh, Scotland was, but in a ver in many ways it was a very similar to game to 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 one in Glasgow where Ukraine and I found it odd that you Ukraine actually played in blue. I, I don't know. I think yellow would have worked as well, but I think we blue it looked nice. But but it was still a little weird, man. Which, Ideally, you Ukraine will play in a full Ukrainian flag, blue up, uh, yellow down. I think that would have been a really uh, nice matchup. But in any case. I really thought that Ukraine were the better team throughout. They were the team that played a little bit more and Wales relied on their counter-attacking skills. And they are super dangerous with those. Uh, and of course you can prepare for, for for this game a little bit more because, you know, Ukraine had to play the kind of tough game against Scotland, although it probably was easier than, 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 than they expected. It was a really good game. It was, you know... Um, uh, wet conditions, which usually makes for a good game at, 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 at a dramatic game. There were many misses on either side. It kind of swung like, um, uh, you know, to first uh, uh, get a feeling uh, face. Then I think uh, Sinchenko scored a free kick goal uh, that Laos did not give uh, because he had not, um, because of the free kick, uh, I think other refs would have count, 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 count that, that one. But uh, from, from that moment, they will not get any, uh, I thought Ukraine will not get any favors from, from the ref, and we were right, right, right about that. Um, but then Ukraine really was the better team. But the one thing is that Ukraine, at least uh, for most of the game, although they had a plus in chances, it was always, you know, more dangerous situations than really um, chances to score. I have to say, uh, or, you know, 60 or 70 percent chance, which is never really the big one. Um, then there was a short period where Wales was better and then uh, Ukraine actually could talk, talk the upper hand and again, so, you know, in 10 minutes in, in, in it was. And then it was broken by um, a free kick game for Wales in a very promising position. Gareth Bale steps up and Yarmolenko with no opponent around heads it in striker fashion into his own net. Arguably the best player for Ukraine scores an on goal and that must have hurt and from that moment on I mean he was not very good uh, in the well well game in the first half but second half I think he was very well in that game but from that moment on I actually had had feeling that he had a chip on his shoulder he wanted to turn this game around this was not necessary to the benefit of his, his team. 
Um, but just a few minutes after the goal, there was honestly a stonewall penalty or foul on Jarmolenko that Laos did not give. And then it was, I mean, the, uh, the German tetter which said, okay, this is probably one of those where, you know, he's seeking it, he's probably falling a little bit sooner, blah, blah, blah. If you look at it, honestly, for me, this is a penalty. Ukraine should have gotten a penalty right there. Um, I do understand probably the VAR, although uh, from one side, from from the other, I don't. This is one of those decisions where I actually say the VAR, please ref, have a look, just look at it one more time, just to make sure that we're not making a big mistake here. But I know uh, proper doc, 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 uh, doctrine is still, he valid the it's a situation, it's a judgment call, and he judged it to not be a foul. Probably relying on VAR to back him up. So I, I really did not understand this, but you know, I have not been understanding a lot. And then you see the penalty that Norway got against Sweden on the same day, and you're really wondering what is going on. Second half, I think early on there was a really nice uh, counter attack uh, via James, and I think. Um, I, I don't know who, uh, with, 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 with a nice shot where actually, actually Wales could have made it 2 0. But then also Ukraine really piling on the pressure and having good chances. I, I remember especially Malinovsky shot that took a wicked turn and then just goes wide. Uh, but he had to come off then uh, a little bit later for Sharparenko. Uh, on the other side, uh, Wales also hit the post. And then there was a huge chance where uh, Bale is free and probably needs to bury that one. But then on the, on the, on the other side, there were many dangerous situations in the box of Wales. And as I said, uh, Ukraine didn't have the mega chances, but what they had uh, was it was usually very dangerous situations. It was a really interesting game to watch. And the big one was then when Dovbik rises up, he had just come, come, come out for Yaremchuk. As I said, Yaram, Yaremchuk uh, had a little, played a little bit too much with the Chip, Chip, Chip and Shoulder. Because there were a few situations where he took the shot where, well, you know, it, it was clear that Wales is going to do everything to block that shot. Uh, and there were multiple situations like where the Ukrainians just took uh, took the chance of wide range shot because you know wet conditions. But if it gets all the all all the time block, just try to play around a little bit more and not have like two lines of defenders uh, before the shot. So yeah, and I think uh, Yaremchuk was def uh, no Yarmolenko. I'm I, I'm getting it. Yarmolenko. He 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 blow. Yar Yarmolenko was definitely guilty of sometimes not seeing that and wanting to take the shot. But um, Dovbuk takes really sky high, almost Ronaldo like, takes a great header. And the one thing I have is that he tried to place it a little bit uh, to the far uh, corner. If he goes near corner, there's no chance that Hennessy is getting there. But so Hennessy makes a miracle save and he was a last uh, minute call up. And once that didn't did go on, you knew oh, this is not gonna work. And then, of course, there were the, um, the tactical injuries, as I like to call the called Kukum now, where you know, uh, after wave after wave of, of at, at, at attack, of course, defenders now take the chance to. Uh, there's an injury. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna allow my team to come back and uh, rest a little bit. Uh, that was happening, and then Ukraine, I think, even with and there was a five minute stop, so, so, so stoppage, and they got the ball, they never could get a shot, shot, shot off in the end. Wales go through, and I said it already 64 years. I think it was a very entertaining game. Overall, credit has to be given to Wales. I think uh, they did deserve to qualify. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Although I think Ukraine was probably the better, the best team in that in that breaking now. Looking at it, and I don't want to say it, um, because Austria has only played one game on the Rangnick and it went very well. And I know there will be ups and downs. Given that Austria beat Ukraine at the Euros, I actually would probably say that the most talented team in the, among those four is probably Austria, but they were totally undercoached. Um, so that always will hurt, but I hope that now, from now on, things are looking on, on the up. Um, taking Austria out, Ukraine probably the most talented team in there. However, Wales, um, the most talented squad. However, Wales are probably the best team in there. And uh, if you look at them, how they uh, qual qualified in, in, in a group behind uh, Bel Belgium, uh, beating out the Czech Republic, you know, there was always a good chance that Wales uh, will go through there. And it is a great story. It's just one that no one is talking about it anymore. Any, any, any 
Coming up for uh, the, uh, the the qualifiers, we have on Tuesday the big matchup between um, uh, Australia and the UAE to, dis uh, to determine who of those two will go to the uh, Intercontinental Playoff to play Peru. This is on Tuesday, it's in the evening. I actually don't know if I will be able to watch that at the world, although I think it might be interesting to see. And then, of course, uh, Monday afterwards, uh, there is that playoff with the Asian winner against Peru. And then the day after, we have Costa Rica uh, playing New Zealand. And then we know the full field for the World Cup. Um, just, I wouldn't mind UAE qual 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 qualifying, but just in terms of me uh, having wanting to, to, to secure jerseys for all um, teams there. Would be nice if Australia goes through, and I always had sympathies for Australia and and in anyway, because then it's basically between Costa Rica and New Zealand and Saudi Arabia and Qatar are the teams that I need to get jerseys from, and that would be nice to only know I need to get three more. But yeah, let's see. In any case, please let let me know what you thought about uh, Wales qual 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 qualify the whole Ukraine thing and so on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!